episode of Neverending Adventure. What the hell? I can't even believe it. This is crazy, Ned. This is nuts, man. Man, well, welcome, everybody. This is uh, Russell Tendall. I am one of your hosts. I, I thought we were DJing names. Oh, well, yeah, I'm always DJ Russ. DJ T. Rusty D. DJ Rusty. Uh, you yep. got DJ and Nettie P. There you and go. For today's episode, because we are celebrating not only the fact that we are 50 episodes into this podcast, but we have picked the episode that is all about partying, uh, all about clubbing. We have picked Belly of the Beast for the 50th episode, which is freaking awesome, I think, just kind of how it coincides. Did we, we picked it or it just kind of fell on us? It I fell like, on it. It fell yeah, into our Yeah, we didn't really laps. choose this life. It just kind of chose us. And we are, we're ready to talk about some Adventure Time, Belly of the Beast. And man, I mean, it's just, it's just unbelievable. Like it's almost been a year. We're 50 episodes in. Like we've seen a surprising amount of growth, even in download number, download numbers throughout the entire podcast since we've started. And uh, it's really cool and it's great. Like, I love that we started this just kind of on a whim and it's worked out this yeah. way. And we've, we've gotten travelers and we've had, we've got some special things going on this episode I'm excited about. And it's just going to be good. It's going to be a good one, man. Yeah. You can't party without your friends. So we got a lot of special guests coming on the show today. Um, you guys have probably all heard from them. Uh, if you've been longtime followers of the show, uh, so we have reappearances from everybody that has been uh, guest starred in the first 50 episodes. And so we got a, a really cool like collab special today. Uh, and shout out to Zencaster for making it all happen, right? Yeah, not a sponsor. Not a sponsor, but no, there will be one day. Maybe. No money coming our way <laughs> no from Zencaster, but I'm, I'm about shouting them out. That's fine. I'm about shouting it out because, hey, I mean, we would have been, yeah, totally screwed without them. Yeah. Well, Ned, just before we introduce anybody that might be coming on this podcast today, what, do you, what are your overall thoughts on this episode? Man, I'm I, sure you visited it several times before. Oh, yeah. I've been in this episode several times. And each time it really does get better, I think. I think you just kind of, you kind of find one of the little uh, almost party care bears. You find a new little one with something drawn on its tummy that you never saw the last time. Uh, you pick up something new that Party Pat says. And so, I don't know. This this one just stands the test of time, I feel like, no matter how many times you watch it. Do you have a best bear? I I don't know. Like, Cubby with the little cheese on his or her belly was kind of awesome. I also loved that there was a bear in the background that had, like, a skull and crossbones. I loved oh, that yeah. one. I think my best bear, there's an episode, um, and I think it's when they're eating pancakes or it's somewhere in like that weird montage that we see of them partying. And uh, it's a pink bear and it's standing on a drum while everyone else is dancing around it. And it's like holding its crotch and then it's spanking itself. And I, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with it, but definitely my favorite bear of I this episode. I just yeah. <laughs> the pink self spanking bear is pretty i don't know they were all somewhat epic in their own little bear isms but yeah where I did think, the pancakes come from anyway sorry we're getting into the episode we're getting, we, into, we we're getting just, too far in there yeah let's just introduce uh the first two shall we yeah we've got brr, my wife dj jackie J, or as she likes to be called dj grimby what's up what's up happy to be here excited to talk all things about this episode um, and celebrate with you all as 50 episodes is a huge accomplishment. Super proud of both you guys and can't wait to talk about some cute, cuddly bears cute, cuddly who like bears. to dance. And Russell, who you got on your line over here? Oh, man. Y'all know we got DJ Alley Cat up in this house. Hello. I'm back. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Recent, recent appearance, too. Back after Very a recent. couple episodes. Yeah. I know. She was like, man, I listened back through. I don't think you said man, but she goes, I listened <laughs> back through the episode this week and wasn't loving as we all feel when you hear yourself, you know, back on a phone call or whatever. You're like, oh, I don't know if I like how I sound, but I I think it played out well. I, I really loved that episode that actually came out this week as we we're recording this podcast. So yeah, that was, a, that was yeah. a good one. That was a fun one. And Allie, you had some great great notes in that episode about Greek mythology and bringing that into uh, the deeper Adventure Time universe. Well, thank you. I'm excited to celebrate with you guys this Yeah, episode. I wish we could all just like pop 
pop some champagne, shoot some, hang some streamers. <laughs> I saw help, fireworks. Help, help, yeah. Help me. I saw you help drinking me. some wine. <laughs> yes, we're, we are drinking wine over here. Me and Jackie J both. I was trying to insert the streamer reference from the episode when he's like, <laughs> help me, help me, help me. They're like, he's like, help me with these streamers. <laughs> I just had to. That was my favorite bear. <laughs> that was the streamer bear. That was a good one. Jackie, who's your favorite bear? Oh, man. It's got to be Cubby. Cubby yeah. the Cheese yeah. Kid Bear. Something about him, that little voice. He was just so Man. squishy and small. Three days of dancing, too. Like, <laughs> how are they surviving? And, and well, Gubby's just the paranoid one. I love it. Let's 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 actually think that their their honey energy drinks were maybe there was a little bit of a distillation of that honey. Maybe there was a little extra something going on in there. Yeah, pro- probably so. There had to have been. <laughs> there had to have been. just vibing off of him. You know, they're like, he's never going to stop partying. I know. He. It's so funny. It did remind me just kind of of a couple of, like weirdly enough, like meme Instagram accounts. Um, I don't know if anybody follows Friday Beers on Instagram, but they have all these characters of people that co- go to parties. Um, and they, they label them all as like... Um, the fringe guy and then uh you know senior schneef who's like doing cocaine all the time and the main guy the main guy at every party is dooley dooley is the guy that gets people to show up to the party he's like making the party he's hosting he's the life of the party and i was like dude party pat is the total dooley in this situation i, I, I party pat really bothered me i what? i don't know about y'all yeah He's he's my most punchable character, but he's uh, he, also the tops at the same dan- time. Yeah, he dances the line between punchable and tops, which I think any and I don't know any guy that's douching up at a party. You're kind of like you're you kind of got the party vibe going on for you, but you kind of need to be punched. You know, he's got that that VIP waterbed or what is it, blood waterbed going on too. The heart, the heart, yeah, the monster's heart, Ugh. yeah. But like kind of, that's like kind of weird and also epic kind of at the same time. See, Party Pat reminded me of like a cult leader, like yeah, very much just like a charismatic personality who's like just wanting people to party all the time. Like partying for three days straight would cause so many people to have just pure exhaustion and making really bad decisions. And that's exactly what a cult leader would do. So his name should be Culty Kyle instead Cult- of Party yeah. Pat. <laughs> Culty Kyle. <laughs> that's good, Jackie. Thank you. No, I, you're not wrong though. It does. It does give you some. The fact that Cubby is like whispering to Finn and Jake in this episode, like she's so he a he she. I don't even know if Cubby's a he she, but. Uh, is so nervous about like if some other bear hears that like Cubby doesn't want to party that well there's that other bear that like bullies Cubby a little bit yeah. it's just like hey like why aren't you dancing or whatever Ned there's no war in Boston say <laughs> truly you got to be dancing we're not okay. in a monster's tummy like <laughs> what are you talking about I know very I mean yeah I guess well, I should have thought about the culty thing beforehand because it's kind of like yeah you're in this like destructive situation and somebody's like no, you're not. Just keep <laughs> dancing. Like, big wide eye. Got too much honey in your system. Right. Like, we're going to stay here even if it's really dangerous and we might die. Only until it's like, we really have to get out. Am I going to, like, give you guys the whole truth, all of the information? Yeah. <laughs> but even then, oh. they're partying and he's just like, here's the truth. But uh, distraction, get back to party and like... <laughs> What is the, uh, I mean, we kind of joked about it beforehand about how to potentially introduce this episode, but the, the attention. So apparently we're not in a cave. We're in a monster's belly, <laughs> you know, like very epic. And then the mic drop too. Like there's just something about him that really bothers me, especially when you first see him and he doesn't say anything, pulls down the, the light with his foot. It's just like, it's freaky, man. Like, yeah. ah, putty pat. I don't know, Jackie. It, what, Jackie, what do you think? Because I feel like you have been the one that's watched all of the cult documentaries with me in the past. Like, did you get that initially off Party Pat? 
No, because he actually, Party Pat reminds me of a dear friend of ours. And <laughs> so that's what I was saying. No, he's not here. <laughs> He, I was thinking about him front of mind the whole time. I was like, oh, that totally reminds me of blank. That's crazy. And so ordinarily, I think if I was looking at it at face value, not considering that, I would have said, oh my goodness, this is a cult like DJ Alley Cat. When you said that, I was like, oh my gosh, how did I not see the yeah. signs? I don't know. Maybe um, maybe I'm, I'm susceptible <laughs> to being pulled into a party cult. <laughs> I guess. Hey, it's a party cult. It's fun. It's just yeah. join us. Join us. <laughs> yeah, I, but I, I would definitely be about, streamer bear. <laughs> yeah, help me, it, hang streamer. There's something about party Pat though that I was like, it reminded me of Jackie for some reason. Uh, <laughs> and you know what that is? I don't. Well, I don't mean it that way. Uh, it's the voice actor. The voice actor reminded me of Jackie. Oh, really. Uh, <laughs> Do you know why that is? Now, do you know who does the voice of Party Pat? No, I, I, I got actually some information about the inspiration for Party Pat, but not who the voice actor was. I believe it's Adam Sandberg. <gasps> uh-huh. Even and better. It just reminded me of the, what was it, Halloween when you dress up like a hot rod. Hot rod. That was and quite the why, time. That's why I was like, this is how we can introduce Jackie. We, It's like, well, <laughs> let's say it's Adam Sandberg and... I might have to double chat that oh, just to make Andy, sure. Andy but Sandberg. Andy Sandberg. Sorry. I said Adam. Andy Sandberg. <laughs> yeah. I was like, who the heck is Adam Sandberg? Yeah, my bad. My bad. Uh, but anyways, that's, yeah, that's why I was like, oh, Party Pat. A great episode for, for Jackie to join on that's with us. That's great. Yeah, yeah that, I love that is Andy really Sandberg. Good. Makes the episode even better. Yeah. Andy Sandberg, if you're listening, I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> That sounded really creepy. Oh my gosh. Um, I wasn't trying to be. <laughs> well, we could talk a little bit more about cults, but I think before, I think uh, Allie's got some some cult talk for us. Is that yeah, what give us, we're give about us party, to go into in a minute here? Party yeah. pack cult talk? No. It's more about dancing versus cult. Okay, but it's cult like behavior, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, before we do that, let me get into my theoretically speaking. Theoretically speaking. So I was curious about this. There are two, my theory is there are two reasons why these bears are all about this. And, and the first is they're born into it. They've been dancing for three days. Who knows where they were partying beforehand. I think physically it'd be hard for them to escape and they have no support system outside of the cult. And therefore they're just there, they're grooving, they're dancing. And it's just part of who they are. My other thought is that they're victims of groupthink. Uh, and groupthink meaning, so they're well-intentioned bears, uh, but they're making irrational decisions that are non-optimal for their, their selves or, or what they're doing um, that are spurred by the urge to conform with everybody else. Uh, so everyone wants to be a part of something. Everybody wants to fit in. And you can very easily ignore the dangers that are around you simply by having that groupthink kind of happening. Um, yeah. No, I, yeah. I agree with you. And... I don't, I don't see why it couldn't be both. You know, I don't think it would have to be one or the other, uh, theoretically speaking in, in terms of a, a more lighthearted, but g- going off of that, I do think the group think has an aspect to that. And I, I a hundred percent agree, but I do think at the core of who the bears are, I do think that they are probably nomadic partiers so that they, obviously they, they thought they were in a cave, but they obviously have only been there for three days. So like my theoretically speaking, would be the bears are cave hoppers and they basically kind of hop from cave to cave and party it out until it's like trashed and destroyed and then move to the next cave. And then they just moved to this one and it was like a sleeping monster and they just walked in his mouth while he was asleep. Um, yeah, they, they Star Wars did or whatever, you know? Yeah, very, very Empire Strikes Back-ish. Or through the mine that nobody <laughs> uses anymore. Oh yeah, what was up with that? <laughs> The poo poo mine. Speaking. <laughs> they climbed in through the mine and then nobody uses it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so dark. I don't want to even think about that. Honestly, I, I think that's what happened. The way they <laughs> spoke about it, that's totally what happened. <laughs> that is definitely what happened. You're not wrong. It's <laughs> a big butthole, y'all. He's got a big butthole. That monster's got a real big butthole. 
because when they were on their way out, I was like, yeah, they probably wouldn't show that on TV. And I was like, saw them all just covered in crap. <laughs> Was yeah, like, maybe they to, would. I don't to know. speak to Jackie's <laughs> point, they did so much to avoid a PG or TV fourteen rating because they called they called poop. They were like, "It's the stuff." They called it the butt intestines. They like the dark minds. Like they they danced around getting uh, I don't know pr- like gross language. Uh, what do you, what do you even call that on TV? Just profuse language. Ex- explicit. Explicit. Well, yeah. it wouldn't be explicit because you can say that stuff on TV, oh. but you, it couldn't have gotten their like typical like Cartoon Network like appropriate for all ages rating, you know. To be vulgar, fair, I, I don't know. yeah, <laughs> probably yeah, vulgar. Vulgar is definitely the word. <laughs> they they avoided a lot of vulgarity. Definitely, I I feel like it kind of fit for at least Finn in a way because there was that episode where Finn like the boom boom mountain i think where it's obviously a touchy subject for him already so maybe that's also playing into why they like avoid using words that uh, yeah. are explicit. Talk or yeah. Poop yeah. Talk. yeah yeah cuz <laughs> cuz it triggers Finn's like post traumatic baby baby life boom boom on a leaf <laughs> disorder <Exactly. laughs> well yeah and probably right Ali, let's hear about your your dancing theory. Do you have a <laughs> theoretically speaking for us, or would it be something else technically? I guess it's kind of like a theoretically speaking, and it kind of goes into the group think too. So when I first watched the episode, it didn't really remind me of a cult right away. It my first thought was about like dancing plagues, which used to happen in Europe in like the 1500s and the most, the biggest one was in the 1500s, I should say, where it all started with a woman who was dancing and then she got the whole town to join in until some people claim there was about 400 people who joined in into the (laughs) dance party and none of them could stop dancing. They danced for three months and some of them died from heart attacks and strokes um, I'm sorry. It's not funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Like, no, that's funny like, you though, can't cause... not think about that and not think that that has to be to kind of kind of ridiculously funny. Right. Three words: they... ancient flash dance. Four <laughs> words: yeah, ancient <laughs> ancient flash dance tragedy. <laughs> right. They like. And people really didn't know what was causing it. Physicians were just like, oh, they just have hot blood. They just need to keep dancing it out. And obviously that didn't work. And so the town started hiring like musicians and accompanying like (laughs) professional dancers to like join in and hoping that the music would help them stop dancing. But obviously that didn't work. Um, It really all ended because they like forcibly took the residents to like a church and the church made them like ask for forgiveness and then they all stopped dancing. Gosh, this was, this was like the 1500s version of Footloose over here. Like. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what it reminded me of when they were like, we've been dancing for three days. I'm like, yeah, we've been dancing for three months. Like <laughs> people are starting to die here. People are dying. Bears are going to die. Yeah. Why didn't we learn about that in school? That is just fascinating. <laughs> How oh many goodness. bears did they throw down the butt mine? That maybe that's what I want to know. Maybe that's why they don't go there anymore. Oh. Bear oh, punishment? all 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 bears that, you know, had ever stopped partying, they tossed into the butt mine as like punishment. <laughs> it's possible. It's very possible. I don't know. This I mean, I feel like this episode begs a ton of theoretically speakings and and a ton of like where are we? Why are we here? Why are the bears here? I don't know, Jackie. Do you have any any specific thoughts about just what's happening and are they for the the free will aspect of the bears and or the group think aspect? Now I'm sort of, I mean, I don't know if to that level of, you know, that, that kind of depth, but I just had a thought, you know, maybe they were dancing to, but then this, you know, Cubby kind of contradicts it, but dancing to avoid the stress of really accepting reality. (laughs) 
reality is that they're living in caves and maybe they're, they don't have a lot of stability. So like, let's just dance because that's the easiest thing we can do. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess that, that does have, you know, some, some depth to it, but I mean, I, I did like, I, I did like to watch them dance. That sounded really weird. <laughs> I like All this to watch to them say, dance. One thing I'll say too is I thought they did a good job. This might be a social commentary thing as well. Just how each bear like had their own different, like, even though they were all doing the same thing, you could differentiate between bomb bear, but a bomb on the thigh. I thought that was really interesting. And, you know, cheese bear cubby and skull and bones bear. And so like, they obviously all had some, a little special something about them and they were all there together. So I think there's a lot of angles you can look at this from, but, Part of me is like, man, I just want to, I just want to just look at them all dancing and having fun because I want to be dancing and having fun. That's true. Yeah, and maybe I want to keep it simple because I don't want to think about stressful things. Yeah, and I, well, I, that that brings in kind of one of one of my deeper thoughts, and I'm sure we'll expand on this kind of through our conversation more. Is that party pat does tap into. Um, and and really, my tops of the episode here is is Party Pat's quote when he he verges on the line of getting deep. And when he says, "What what is he? I'm I'm reading my quote here. You move to the music, but that's not dancing. You chew pancakes, but you're not tasting. To truly party, one must leave behind the problems that are troubling and open one's mind's eye. And that's like so deep. And kind of like Jackie, what you're saying is that. They're kind of like partying to forget their troubles. Um, but then he all of a sudden he is like, oh, I'm just kidding. You guys are awesome. This is a sticker, you know? And so he <laughs> almost he almost taps into the reason why we as humans go about partying. Now, we'll talk a little bit more later on the healthy balance of reality checking versus three days of bender, you know? Well, what do y'all do for like taking the time and relaxing and forgetting about your, your woes or your worries of the day. Like what is your stress relief? Jackie, kick it off there. Yeah. All right. I'm going to speak for the both of us, Ned, because most of the time we're, we're doing the, we're doing the same thing to, to decompress after work. And that's couch, some good comfort food, maybe some wine. And currently right now it's watching servant on Apple TV, which is amazing. And this is, not a shameless plug, and we're not being sponsored, but I love it. And Rupert Grant is in it, and he's awesome. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> okay, nice. I, I've done that and very much escaped into Elden Ring, the new Dark Souls game. I have put 40 hours into it already. Wow, and it's 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 pretty much an escape for sure. I'm jealous. That's awesome. It's crazy. What about you guys? I was thinking about this the other day, man, and I gotta say, riding my bike is probably mm -hmm. my ultimate escape for sure. And I, I got burned out doing that too much when I was younger. But the other day I went and rode 20 miles and the whole time, the only thing on my mind was biking. And that was uh, such a stress relief. It was really great. Yeah. What about you, Allie? Uh, I would probably say either a bath, like a bubble bath, or going on... Bubble bath. <laughs> yeah, a bubble bath. A, a turby. <laughs> turby. Um, or um, going on hikes with my dog. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. But I both are, well, I'm surprised bo both of y'all both Pokemon Go together. And I feel like that's that good escape from reality, so, but somewhat being in reality at the same time, you know? It is. And I got to say, like I said the other week, like I kind of got a little burnout on Pokemon. I'm back to playing Pokemon Go. But I'm on a Batman kick now after the new Batman movie. <laughs> yeah, that oh, it was Gosh, so good. Gosh, what an amazing saw film! It? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, amazing, Dude, absolute, absolutely amazing, absolutely clutch. No spoilers though, because uh... yeah, Mike, Mike's over here. Yeah. Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! I said we our other special guest coming up after the break is your favorite one and only DJ Cowboy Hat, who's been listening in and yeah, making notes to where to edit our podcast tonight. But he's over here shaking his head, saying no, he has not seen Batman yet, so no spoilers. Okay. Well, before we go into a break, you know, I want to let 
our, our two guests here have their final thoughts, but I also want to know their lovelies. G- g- give me some sugar, baby. Jackie, would you would you mind kicking us off with the first lovely of the episode? Oh, not at all. I think I think it's Cubby. I don't know. He's just too darn cute. And that little cheese shirt, something about him. It's a I special little somebody. It had to have been the voice too. The voice. That was totally the voice. Cubby. Yeah, it sounded like Butters from South Park. That's probably why I like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I like about South Park. Butters. Can't handle anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Can't handle anything else. <laughs> what about um, you, Allie? Allie Cat, you didn't have a lovely? Uh, no lovely. I don't know. I think if I had to choose, I I liked Jake a lot this episode, and I I really did like the streamer bear. <laughs> Stream streamer bear was good. Yeah, I love so, it. Well, let's let's take a little break, and that'll be a good lead in when we come back in for the break. Me and Russell will get into our lovelies with DJ Cowboy Hat, and we'll we'll have that flow into the rest of the episode. So take a quick breather. We'll all gather our thoughts and all gather our, our party selves and our, yeah. our party mentality. Thanks so much for, for being on the podcast, Allie and yes, Jackie. Yes, you guys have been awesome. Thank you. What a you. pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Yes, Pleasure's all ours. They'll be back. They'll be they'll back be, before too long. They'll be back. They'll be back. We'll see you guys. Soon. All right. <laughs> bye. See you. What's up, Russ? Hey, Ned. How's it going? It is going good, man. We, we're taking a break from our typical bad advertisements over here and giving oh, you yeah. guys some quality 50th episode special real opportunity over here. Opportunity. We're begging. I, you know, however you want to phrase it, it works. We're not. Maybe a little begging, but we wanted to give you guys a promotional, actual yeah. swag opportunity that we are going to be doing a special here where if you... Uh, Take a screenshot, leave us an Apple review podcast, uh, Apple podcast review, whatever you want to call it, um, and shoot us a screenshot. Email at us uh, to at nea.travelerslog at gmail.com. Send it to us on our Instagram, whatever it is. Uh, send it our way that you have actually left a review on Apple Podcasts, and we will send you guys a free sticker. Um, yeah, obviously, it's send easy along to do. Your, uh, your, your, your mailing address as well, but... Yeah, it's easy to do. And honestly, you can do it on your cell phone, especially if you have an iPhone. You've already got the Apple Podcast app downloaded onto your phone. Um, and it helps us so much. And I, you know, we want to get stickers in. This will be the first way we go about giving out some stickers. And if you've already done a review and you want a sticker, screenshot your personal review and we'll also send you a sticker. Don't be like, oh, I missed out. Uh, don't yes. worry, we got you. Yeah, and we want we want all of you like super fans, all you travelers out there to feel loved, to feel like uh, you're re- you're represented for listening to our podcast. And this is a great way to just kind of like you know broaden the community. Yeah, and you know why that is, Ned? Why is that? Because we love the Jew guys. We love the Jew guys. I stole it. I stole it. It's mine now. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back from our f- first non advertisement. Man, uh, you know, it might be our own bad advertisement or our <laughs> might own be, bad still might podcast. Be pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just we'll playing. See, if you're man. here still, you love us and, and you know, you know, we do this for you fun. You love us. We love Jews. You know, we love it's, Jews. Goes, it's a circle of love. Yes, certainly is a circle of love. Just like well, um, the Lion King. No, that's circle of life. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a little circle of love going on right here because we have our very own. DJ Cowboy had joining us for the second half of our special here. Wow. So good to be back, gentlemen. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Michael, it's so good. Mm. Man, you're still in Nashville, and I don't think we've hung out since Ned left. That's we've a shame. been meaning to go longboard. Yeah, skateboard. Yeah, yes. we really need to do that because I've been, it's since the springtime happened, that's all I can do. Um, and that was my answer for earlier. What do you do to blow off steam? And I was like, ah, these, I've been skateboarding for like a solid few years now it's definitely become that for me that's my party pat yeah. philosophy thing so so he is now officially become party skateboard dj cowboy hat mm. it's got a Just, ring to it it's got a ring it's getting a little ridiculous but i like it <laughs> i so love it everything love else it. about adventure time <laughs> i know we got we got to stay on that ridiculous high note well, before we left, we mentioned that we were going to go into our lovelies yes, and we uh did. ned could you give me your lovely 
All right. It's, it's, you know, as much as we ripped into him, as much as I know you guys are going to rip to him, my lovely's party Pat, man. Oh my gosh. I think his vibe is a Mac, even, even though he puts off a cultish leader vibe, his vibe is immaculate. His party oh, style, just the fact that it wasn't just about like, you know, you start off and they were hanging at the bar, they were being lame and he was kind of like bobbing his head to the music. But then it went into like chicken fights, eating pancakes, uh, karaoke. And I was like, this guy's not just about like, let's, you know, sit at the bar and party. It was like, this is a, he's, he's vibing. He's true party. And he's like, bro, be quiet. Let the party I can take, relate with him a little bit. The home. way, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut off. Oh your, no, I just said that his quietness is like, yeah, like you must become one with the party. He was like Zen master party master. And I think that's true. why he got my lovely. It was a, he was like, he took Zen master and party and put it into one. I can relate with him in the sense that how he eats the pancakes and he's just like rocking out while he's eating pancakes. That's how mm-hmm. I feel whenever I have pancakes. It's just, it's a party in my mouth. He party represents mouth. the things of the devil, Ned. And the I don't understand. The devil. <laughs> <laughs> I just, okay. So you, you guys were talking about cult stuff earlier and just ringing around in my head like bells. Like I could only compare him to like satanic stuff. As soon as I saw him on the bed of a bleeding heart, I was like, this, this is Satan. <laughs> this is safe. Don't we could not be on two more opposite ends of this. <laughs> I know. He's so I know. freaky. I, if he was Satan, I would not have been too surprised. He's so freaky at first. I just want to punch him. Just want to yeah. give him a fistful of my, my fist. I don't know. There's my fist. There was something there. There is that like creepy vibe for me, but then there was something just like utterly calming of like, he's fate. Maybe he knows their fate. Maybe he understands that they are in some sort of dire situation. He's like, no, just calm. It's all about the party. But yeah, it leads off on that cult vibe conversation. He's so. double lying about the third eye thing. He's really got one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. He's got that devil third eye. I'm convinced that they're definitely killing off any bears that are refusing the party and throwing yeah. them down the, the poop hole. Yeah. It makes you question why there was a fear of party Pat and even, and even Cubby being like, this is as far as I go and like leading Jake and Finn in there as, you know, but I don't know. It, it, Despite all of that, now I can't withdraw my my lovely being Party Pat. All right, that's fine. So Russell, so we're on the same page about Party Pat. Yeah, on the same one, two, three. We should say our lovely. All right, all right. One, two, three. Cubby. Jake. Oh, well, that's uh, good. One. Yeah. Well, Cubby was kind of, well yeah. Cubby was just like the only bear I tolerated. I found them all to just be obnoxious. I was like, uh, they're just idiots. Like it's ignorance for ignorance' sake. A little bit with the bears. And like, it was just the whole like thing, like, let's just party to ignore our responsibilities. That's, that's the sort of lesson I got with this episode along with like, oh, this dude might worship the devil. If not, if not be the devil. Um, but yeah, Cubby was the only one who was like, you know, using his brain or his or her brain and he never really gets credited for it. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, Jake and Finn wouldn't have really stopped and thought about it for a minute because they they were like, we're trying to save these bears. They were trying to adventure with it, and Cubby was the only one that came up to them and was like, "Hey, you're right. Like, we, I, I know something's wrong. Like, you need to tell Party Pat to stop. Otherwise, like, I don't think Jake and Finn would have even made any headway getting through to the bears. You know, yeah, if it weren't the, for Cubby, the bomb bear. Because I'm getting Cubby and the bomb bear at the beginning, the streamer bear." confused was the streamer bear the one that crawled around then yeah, in a really freaky that, way yeah i didn't like was, that yeah wasn't that jackie's lovely i already yeah, forgot well, no ja- no that was that that was ally's lovely that was ally's lovely Allie, yeah, yeah that was ally's lovely it was here. creepy spider How bear dare you? she just said i liked it <laughs> i liked, <laughs> I liked, it. liked him I liked Russell, him. Tell, tell me about jake because this was a great jake episode I don't, well, first off, I'm just so curious why his stomach was upset out of, out of nowhere in the middle of the episode. I don't think there was any, he's like, how's your nausea? You know, it's like, why is he not nauseous? You know, it smelled but, like monster stomach. Yeah. I, I remember so. they, they fall into the stomach and he's like, oh, this is so icky. Like, but there was no indication that he was feeling sick from it. It was just, and he was fine. I don't know. I was, I'm a little skeptical, but I definitely, I think that's probably what they were going for. Um, yeah. The reason he's my lovely, though, is the way he calls out Party Pat at the end of the episode. He bails to go watch TV, and he's just like, you're sick, Party Pat. 
and walks <laughs> away. I'm going to go watch TV or whatever. And that that's why he's my lovely. I just, Great. that line, I had two big laughs this episode. It was that line. And then the might drop by party Pat, which is why he's kind of my tops. And yet also my most punchable character when he's like, we're in a monster's belly. He yells that out. And then he just looks back at Finn and Jake and drops the mic. That was a fantastic moment, but he is still not my lovely. No, I, I, I see it. And, and it, it makes me a little upset that I liked party Pat so much, but yeah, it's like punchable, but it was, it was, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I get suckered in on the vibes, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, they, they match parties, pa- party Pat's vibes with that, uh, that song. What is it? Their favorite things. Is that what that song is called? Was it the favorite things? Like when they were doing karaoke? Yeah. When they were trying to bum everybody out so they could actually oh. tell them what's really going on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, was dead. I hate it. You know, I, I had to say it. I had to bring it up, especially with Mike on the call here is that uh, they, they switched automatically to country music to bum them out. <laughs> and then I oh, couldn't yeah. help but notice that as they, they went from like boom, boom, boom to my hot dog. We're going to talk about this song. <laughs> yeah, I want to well, get all the, of the lyrics. And I was going to say, this is, this is my tops. This is my tops. My second tops of the episodes besides party Pat's uh, quote about, you know, you got to move to move to music, but not dancing was the, the food song was my tops. Country music comes from a very like authentic place, at least country music worth listening to. And when Jake sang about his milkshake dying, like I really felt that it, it was like, he actually, you know, was portraying what it felt like to watch your milkshake just melt in front of you. But they said a line in this song that I made sure to quote because it just blew my mind. They talked about all these foods and they're like, my burger is dying, blah, blah, blah. And then they said, they cannot procreate in little beds. Like (laughs) the the foods dead now can't go and have sex. That's what they're talking about. Yep. And it's just a baffling song. I want to get all of the lyrics. It's a a great song. I actually have the lyrics right in front of me. Oh, Uh, Russell. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it starts off Finn's talking about his hot dog, his pizza, his cupcake. Jake goes, he's a little confused. What are we doing? He goes, my donut's dead. My burger's dead. My milkshake is dead. And uh, Finn does the, all our favorite foods are totally dead. They can't procreate in little food beds. We'll eat them up and turn them into stuff. And then Jake says, and we'll cry over their graves, but you can't cry enough. And then both of them together, when you miss someone you love, you can't cry enough. That's rid- it's ridiculously too deep. Beautiful. For it's so food. good. <laughs> it's ridiculously too beautiful for a song about cheeseburgers being dead. And like, I, yeah, good thing country music got him to calm down, man. Sometimes too much bass gives you a headache. Yeah. Is this the antithesis of, of uh, Jimmy Buffett's cheeseburger in paradise? Is that <laughs> <laughs> my burger is dead? There was a theory about this song that I think the theory really? that I read was that it's the song, the lyrics are trying to convey to the bears that, hey, this is the situation you're in. You've been swallowed by a monster and you're about to be dead. So the food being dead is just them a metaphor for them eating it. And now it's it's dead and it's about to turn it into stuff. And so at the end of it, that's why the I think in a theory, the bears are all bummed out and they're sad. And it's like, hey, are you realizing now that you're about to be stuff? Well, you are. And we got to go. There's lava coming. I mean, the really deep side of that is like, what is, you, you are right. Cause like, what if there's a little bear with a hot dog on his stomach? And what if there's a little bear with a pizza on his stomach? And what if there's a little bear with the, the I think there was a bear with a burger on his stomach. And so all of a sudden those, the bear started thinking about like, Oh, hot dog bear is dead. Burger bear is dead. Pizza bear is dead. Milkshake bear is dead. And that like Finn was almost referring to like, when he said my hot dog, he was looking directly at hot dog bear, you know, with mm. the little hot. And so like, that's, oh, that's such a good, that's a good thing. Again, all of this episode is all theoretically speaking, but. This is what this podcast is all about. what it's about. It's the meat. And I can't take credit for that theory. I can't remember where I read it. I honestly, I might've read that straight off of the, uh, the fan Wikipedia page. So. Yeah. Still though, know. it got us, that got me thinking about like why that song would have been so sad for the bears. Maybe that, that is was, funny were, that it's a country song, though. <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. It's a country song. 
<laughs> Sorry, um, Michael. <laughs> no, no, me. I, I agree with it. It's fitting. It's it's funny and fitting. Um, I, I would okay, so let's maybe go to the top of the episode because I yeah. have some stuff to talk about with the dream stuff, but then there is a moment at the end as well. I think we should uh visit yeah. or at least yeah, I we, thought was we didn't talk about the beginning of the episode gnarly. at all. So like yeah, hit us with with what you thought about, you know. Waking up dreaming. Yeah, waking up dreaming. Like, I actually relate to that. Sometimes it's like, uh, or I've had a few dreams where I just felt like I was getting out of bed. Um, but my tops of the episode was Jake gets kicked over the mountains. And then he comes back and he goes, oh, I don't think this is a dream. And <laughs> Finn just looks up and he goes, oh, well, then it's time to get real. And it's then they, they start fighting. <laughs> when he says it's time to get real, I was like, that's so awesome because he thought he was dreaming and now let's get real. But it's just, it was, it was silly. And the way he said it was perfect. That was my tops of the episode. Yeah. That was a, nice. that was like a runner up tops for me. It was, I had it right, like written in my notes. It was like, Oh man, time to get real. With the, with the root sword too, mm-hmm. you know, like bring the root sword back out. Like I love that consistency. And I also, like you're saying, I love Jake getting needed over the mountain, like over <laughs> and then the horizon. immediately being like whoop, and stretching yeah. right back. He's, he's back. I mean, someone signed, I don't know if Georgia needs a new football kicker, but someone signed that monster up because <laughs> that dude can <laughs> just kick a field goal. Freaking yeeted shake across the mountain. Oh, yeah. No, I did. I did have a note too. I feel like, um, about like the opening scene, just with it being very similar to lucid dreaming and that Jake and Finn are very open to the fact that they're sharing a dream um because they wake up first of all like we always talk about in this in the show russell beautiful colors like they have this very uh evening time color palette that they go for and they have but kind of this is maybe the first time that they have opened up with this morning time palette like very orange very yellow uh dark purple circles under their eyes for tiredness so first of all lovely beginning to the episode mm-hmm. but then they i was like man they must have had some experiences or something kind of psychodramatic of them sharing dreams before. Cause they are very just like it clicks to them and they're like, dream, dream, we're in a dream. We can do what we want. Boom, boom, boom. They're quick into it. It's really impressive almost their ability to do that. I've never been able to have you ever been able to take a lucid dream and like play around in it? Michael, you're saying yes. Yeah. Uh only a couple times. And it's so trippy. Cause like oh, when I was a kid, I was sort of fascinated by the idea that I was like having dreams at night. And so I would think about them a lot during the day. And I think that translated to like me thinking more about like, Oh, what if I could control a dream? And then I think like my dad or someone just like said, Oh, like, Oh, you know, you can like nothing can happen to you in a dream. And if you realize you're in a dream, you can control it. And only two times in my childhood, do I actually remember falling asleep and going into the dream. But like I had a couple where I like literally rode dinosaurs around because I was like, I'm controlling my dream right now. This is lit. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. I've I've been very close on the verge of it. Um, I feel like, the, I mean, the closest in, in more of it, it's, it's more of like lucid dreaming because it feels that way. But if you've ever had like a dream where you can actually fly and it becomes very conscious that you're flying and you're trying to fly and you're actually like putting forth a physical effort in your dream. I've had a couple of those and it is a, it is a wild feeling. Mm-hmm. I had a buddy in college who would paint one of his fingernails And the theory was if you look down in your dream and your fingernail was not painted, that's how you would know you were in a dream. And so it would allow him like in theory over time to start to control his dreams like that. Very inception-y for sure. I don't don't know if it ever worked, but I always thought that was so fascinating. He just had one fingernail that was painted black. Yeah. That's right. It was always just so he could lose the dream. Yeah, maybe. Um, Or he just wanted to be edgy. I did have a theory or an idea about, or not really a theory, it's something I noticed at the beginning of the episode that I really enjoyed was seeing the monster go about having the fireworks shooting out of his mouth and immediately reaching for a tree and swallowing it, trying to like subdue the fireworks that were irritating him. So you see that foreshadowing really early on Mm -hmm. in the episode that later on when he hears Finn and Jake in his mouth discussing like, well, it's just trees, like the the bears aren't being hurt by this. It's okay. He is like, they're like, what did they say? At least it's not lava. And then the bear goes or the monster goes and and starts drinking lava. You know, it's a really cool foreshadow right at the beginning of the episode that he is irritated. He's not enjoying this. And I think toward the end of the episode, 
the monster even has a bandage on his butt and his mouth, yep. maybe? Yeah. Yeah, no, he definitely has a bandage on his butt after he obviously poops out like a whole volcano of lava mixed with bears. Like, Dude, uh, but no, the, Tom, I would say if I, if I had a runner up lovely for the episode, it was the monster because he's the one um, that kind of gets forgotten about that, that really deserves the most sympathy here. You know, that he's just, he's just going about his day and he's got freaking fireworks blowing up out of his mouth. And he's just trying to, he's just, whatever monsters do on a day to day basis, he's just trying to go about that. And the bears are wrecking his life, you know? And he doesn't even have a name. He's not like humanized like a, the, a lot of the other creatures are in this world. He's just the monster, you know? I don't know. But I know. Uh, it was, it was we talked a lot about how, well, I didn't mean to cut you guys off with the monster. No, he no, was, that was oh, yeah, good. Yeah, my final thoughts there. Um, party Pat. And Ned, I, I've been thinking, I'm like, wow, this is Ned's lovely. Can I really dog him like this? And like, I'm, I'm just going to go with it. I really hated this character. He had one small moment when he was like, I loved when he used the word prithee. That was cool. Prithee, take that. Prithee, take us upon thy gut. Those are big words. And he had a moment there at the end. But it just kind of goes back to the whole thing of like, he wanted to go back in a monster's stomach, regardless of the danger. If they're, you know. It's just the most satanic thing you could do to me. Like, hey, you know that thing that like almost got you killed? Well, what if we do that again and we like think it's fun? And that's right when Jake calls him. He's like, "You're you're sick, Party Pat." When yep. when Party Pat is like, yeah, "My bears need a fat party club to grind in." <laughs> a fat party club <laughs> so to grind. In. Yeah, that was like, oh, just that's where it did get kind of creepy. You know, like my bears need a place to go grind in, but. Well, I'm glad you bring up Party Pat because I, th- I feel like both of my deep thoughts, I've got kind of two sides of the same coin of a deep thought here because Party Pat kind of, you know, and, and the bear's mentality, but but more of what Party Pat instills on them in this episode is that a, the party lifestyle itself is very self-destructive. And I think it's shown two ways in this episode. It's, it's one, it's because the partying of the bears is hurting a lot of people of the people around them and that, that one being the monster, you know? And so I feel like, you know, the people that live a very insane, you know, crazy party life, I'm all about the party that they do hurt a lot of people around them. Um, they're, they're very, uh, non-conscious of what their actions do to those around them. Um, and that's, I think that's very much displayed with the monster, uh, aspect and in kind of a little bit of like, you know, with what Cubby says, you know, uh, and, and really that, he's bringing down the bears and he's good. The bears are going to die and that the monster is being affected by it. But then the different, the flip side of my deep thought on this episode, the other side of that coin is that party Pat was spitting the knowledge of going, you know, you can go through the motions, but um, when he's talking to Finn and Jake about like, you just went through the motions. You just were like, I'm doing this and you really do have to open your mind's eye and have something in your life that leaves the troubles behind in order to kind of enjoy life and open your mind's eye. And and if you were stressed about work all the time, you'd obviously not enjoy anything. And, you know, I almost, work was stressing me out today so bad. I almost like didn't want to do the podcast today because I was just so psyched out. Um, but it is something I really enjoy. It is something that like, shuts the troubles of life out. So that's why, you know, a very long winded explanation why party Pat maybe got my lovely is it's, it's displaying the self, the self-destructive and societally destructive of over partying, but the values and I say the values of partying, but the values of, of really knowing and consciously being able to take that time and be like, put your troubles away, man. Like you got to take that moment and enjoy life. You know, that's my, that's my very deep thought behind that. I appreciate the heck out of that. And I I apologize to you for dogging on your lovely. No, no, don't dog on him all day. I apologize to party Pat and everything you just said makes me want to do the, like a shameless plug for like, we maybe should do a midnight gospel like feature at some point in this podcast's future. Cause that was, that's, that was a big theme. Yeah. 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 Well, midnight gospel, it takes, it takes the, the themes from adventure time that, we've got to dig deep for the themes in adventure time and midnight gospel like throws them in your face. Hardcore, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
it would be hard if midnight gospel is what I think it is. We'd be doing a podcast of a podcast at that point. That's, that's a really difficult podcast episode to do. I mean, it's even hard to watch. I mean, sometimes I got to really be in the mood for that show. Um, personally, I don't know. Oh yeah. It's, Um, it's a mood. (laughs) It's a deep way. It'd be like listening to our podcast and listening to never ending adventure. And then being like, we're going to do a podcast about never ending adventure and get deeper mm -hmm. on what they're saying. It's, it'd be, it'd be like really getting into some meat of some, I don't know, hard topics. I appreciate Ned having to defend his choice in this episode though. I think you you deserve that one. Yeah, you did good. You did good. A little claps for Patrick. <laughs> Cla- claps for Patrick. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Is, that, is it Pats for Patrick? Pats for Patrick. Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. I'm just so off with my uh, my quoting and my references this episode. <laughs> oh, well. That's a SpongeBob reference for those who never watched uh, old school, like season two SpongeBob. Oh, so good. The good so stuff, good. man. That's well, getting into the meat of it. Let's do, let's do lessons, if that's cool with y'all. Yeah, man. Michael, kick us off with, with your lesson from oh, this Oh, no, no. Somebody else go first. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I got it. Okay. It's, it's, I, yeah, I obviously after, have after it, hearing but... that information I just dropped on you guys, I think yeah. Michael's got to <laughs> evaluate his lesson again. Exactly. I'll go, I'll go for my first lesson then. I'll, I'll do that and I'll pause for my second lesson. Let one of y'all fill in. So the first one I have is never take your bar club for granted. So whatever your like home bar is, your home club, you know, like I lost that. I lost my home bar and uh, don't take it for granted. Good times, you know? I know. I just lost mine to this old Centennial Bar in West Nashville. Missing missing that one already. That is a good bar. Now, what's your um, first lesson? First lesson is the partying is good, but you got to make sure it's not at the sake of all your friends, uh, your friends and yourself getting burnt in the end, pun intended. Mm. I like that. Life is not about partying, but there is a time for cutting loose. Mm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good, well, that's a, that's just a simple way of putting like my deep thought, you know, like cutting loose is good, but not, yeah, like not. Yeah. You can get get cancer from being balled up too much your whole life, Yeah, you know, like that's just, there's no, no way to live like that and just work every day. Yeah. I don't know, Russell. You guys, you obviously have a second one because we we all yeah. kind of went, went around first note, round. Big monster, big butthole. Big My monster, second lesson. That's, a, that's the other thing I learned about this episode. Man, I wish I'd thought about that. And after what Ali said at the beginning of this episode, with maybe that's how they got in there. And I was like, oh no, that's definitely how they got in there. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Probably. Oh man. Well, I do. I wish I had a fun lesson here, but my second no, one, good. it reiterates some things, but uh, you got to have a moment an activity, something that you can do to leave your troubles behind and begin to look at life through your mind's eye. Uh, it, it typically is for myself, like the moments where I go and do those things that I love. Um, for party pad, it was partying for me. It's, uh, honestly, it's sitting outside with a good glass of wine, um, where you have that moment where it opens your your mind's eye and you really kind of start to think introspectively, uh, but you got to you also have to make sure that that activity that opens your mind's third eye, whatever it is, is not destructive because it's very much you could be like, yeah, like cocaine is what gets me like on that next level, and you'd be like, well, that's that's a destructive <laughs> way of opening your mind's third eye, and you don't need to be doing that, you know. <laughs> And if you're playing along uh, the drinking game, every time Ned says cocaine this episode, you have to take a shot. Hey, and we've already been marking all three. of these as explicit. And so every time fine. he says mind's eye, you have to drink a beer. <laughs> we're Party. trying to get all you guys wasted. We're partying. <laughs> Mike, what? It's the 50th. I mean, it's the right? 50th. We, you know, we got, we got to celebrate somehow, right? <laughs> Again, uh, yeah, no hate to people, but, but please don't do cocaine. Please don't what? do it. It's not good. I agree. <laughs> it's just not. It's it. just not good. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna make a joke about that. Like, well, come on. <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I agree with that. It's not good for you. It's, that's it's a just, hard drug, just, man. It's a hard drug. It's not good. Oh man, this is dude, y'all. This has been a fun episode. We're we're coming up on an hour here. This is awesome. Yeah. 
Uh, well, I, I'm out. I'm out for this episode. I don't know if I have any other thoughts or, or factoids or anything. Um, oh, man. Well, let me send it home this. with some lame factoids over here. We'll just cap it off with some fun stuff that, man, first one off the bat, Party Pat was based on Pat McHale, previously the creative director of Adventure Time and Pin Ward's right-hand man. Natty's factoids! <laughs> 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 just got to right. take, take it home with that. We won't even we won't even sound bite that one, will we? We'll just have it. That's all. probably gonna have to be it for this. I think one. I just Organic. woke up, Allie. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it! I love it. Some good factoids coming in right at the end, to just to bore you guys to sleep. You know, just, just, just to bore you bit. to sleep a little bit. Um, <laughs> well, when uh, Party Pat talks to the monster at the end of the episode, the music that plays is the same music from the title card of Power Animal where uh, Finn was taken in by the gnomes and forced to dance in order to create power for them. So mm. great reuse of music in the show. Yeah, um, obviously, we also have the factoid that his uh, root sword appeared in this episode and the last wow. appearance was in the real you. Um, the monster, along with the party bears, appear in season five of the show in Billy's Bucket List episode, attending Rat Bear's final rap, uh, or uh, excuse me, Rat Bear and Finn's rap battle. Um, and Rat Bear will be in the future. I know, Russ, you don't know about Rat Bear, but he is the ultimate kind of uh, lineage of the party bears. He's awesome. Um, cool. I'm excited. So for, for that. all my fans out here, I think that definitely Rat Bear is a, is a bloodline of the party bears. Um, really kind of last, uh, fact, factoid here, um, is when the monster roared before punning Jake over the horizon near the beginning of the episode, the sound it makes is heavily altered, is a, is a heavily altered elephant bellow. And the same sound clip was combined with the sound of a car driving on a wet road to make the flyby sounds for the TIE fighters in the first Star Wars film. So they're they're doing this weird combo for the really intricate combo of sounds for that. I love that Jake punting scene that everybody loved. Um, so I don't know. That was that was Nettie's fact. Was I say that's uh, you know we saved it for the end because that was all I had left. That's that's about that's about it for this one. We tapped it out on the fiftieth episode special. I love it, man. Whoop, love it. Whoop. Wow, yeah. fifty episodes, y'all. This is. This is crazy. I mean, we're halfway to a hundred. Like, I yeah, I don't, we're two wait, episodes away from uh, technical. Well, technically, we have been out for a year because we have had two times where we've taken a one week break. Wow. So that does put us at an official fifty two weeks at this point, which well, is kind of wild. Thank you, everybody who's stuck around for all fifty episodes, or if you've binge listened to all fifty, you're incredible. Uh, it's so great to have all of you guys. Anyone who's new to this podcast. We love you as well, just as much. Not really, almost. But if you catch up, then we'll love you just as much as everybody else. Yeah, if you listen but, to every other episode three times and yeah. then catch up. Yeah. Okay, then hey, I'll love you that much. There's one guy who's listened to every episode a hundred times. That's the bar. We got it. <laughs> That's the bar. All of our downloads are from that one person. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> well, anyways, thank you guys so much. I just, you know, if you can go find us or... Help us out. Of course, like we said in the advertisement, you can go and get a sticker sent to you by reviewing us and sending us a screenshot. Where can you send those screenshots? You wonder. Instagram at Never Ending Adventure Podcast. To talk at Never Ending Adventure Cast. You probably can't send a screenshot there. Well, maybe you can in the, the direct messages. That'd be fine. Yeah. Uh, Twitter at NEA underscore podcast. Email us your thoughts, your opinions, your reviews at NEA underscore travelers log at gmail.com and check us out on YouTube. Subscribe even if you don't listen there. You know, we love you. We love and you. We and, you. and YouTube sends you all the updates. Honestly, YouTube's the best at push messages. So yeah, they're good, they're good to go. Well, thanks so much, you guys. Ned, do you have any final words? I'll say love that you guys, but you got to send it out this episode specifically with your tagline. Party forever! Thank <laughs> you.